there were a lot of lamb breweries that were closing and they said by the year 2000, this beer style would not exist anymore. Today we're 2019, it's a different story. So we are here in the Zenne Valley, Bayotoland. It's a region in Belgium very well known for lambic beers, which are beers of spontaneous fermentation. So the Zenne Valley is very important for our beer style because in this region there is a very specific sort of uh, wild yeast that's floating around here in the air. It's all around us right here. Uh, these are what we call Bretonomyces yeasts, more specifically the Bretonomyces bruxellensis and Bretonomyces lambicus. These wild yeasts can get onto the beer and get it to ferment spontaneously. After only a couple of hours, you'll see millions of cells starting to grow exponentially, of the cells of these yeast in our beer, and this all just happens spontaneously. And that's actually the thing that makes our beer and this beer style unique and, and unique to this region, unique in Belgium and unique in the world. The predecessor of my father, he was about to retire and he was just going to close and he was making good bottles of Goeze, more, more specifically, sometimes okay bottles but often also very good ones. And my father said, I don't want this gun. He had friends who, who, had, who also liked this, this beer, so why should it disappear? And he was the first to open a new brew house for Lambic in more than, I think it was more than 80 years. That was a, a big step for him, but it was a good step. come from the south of France in Languedoc uh, region. We use these for young lambic now, but we had to cut out the wine stone. We had to, uh, they were dry for some time, so we had to put tension on the rims around the fooder, put water in it to make the wood swell again. Well, it takes about 100 days for the wood to swell in these huge fooders. They are 240 to 270 hectoliters each. So it's a big volume, um, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of work to get them going, but now they're filled with lambic. But before it was yeah, mostly red wine. So yeah, when the beer goes into the cool ship, we open up the windows and we put on a ventilator uh, to create some airflow. And so we create an airflow to pull in air from the outside that contains these yeasts and that flows over to the, the beer. So with these yeast and it just inoculates the beer. So we create an air current this way. Yeah. <laughs> We are brewing Lambic, but we're not brewing Goeze. So Lambic is the beer we brew. It ages in these fooders for one, two, or even three years. Not months, but years. And then afterwards, we have a large selection. We have more than 160 fooders here. Choice, basically, to blend. And so Goeze is a blend of Lambics of different ages, mostly one, two, and three years old. Um, and this blend will re-ferment in the bottle. And this refermentation makes it what we call an oude Goeze. And oude refers to the traditional way of making this beer. Very important is also that the wild yeasts around us, they're influenced by the temperature. So when it gets very hot during the summer, we cannot brew because these yeasts, they're flowing around in a sort of balance between each other and when it gets too hot one of these yeasts can become more dominant than the other and will create off flavors you would have acidity that's not nice to to drink so we can only brew between it depends on the weather october give or take and april give or take uh, the idea of working in the brewery for my brother and myself that came very spontaneously. That was, maybe my father was there some way, uh, always talking and saying, maybe giving hints in the back of our head like a little voice. 
we grew up in this environment and it's part of us and, and so it was quite normal to say I want to work in the brewery. We're very focused on, on making beer, a specific type of beer, we're very specialized in, in Lambic beers, mainly Oudegeus and Oudekrieg, which are beers that are just so unique on its own and there's so much to do just with these beers, uh, just so many techniques we can, just, we can still uh, look forward to go even further in, in the quality of the beers and the taste experiences that you can create. And then, yeah, today we just do this, this tinkering with the beer and seeing where we can go, thinking about what you can experiment, making uh, the, the new variety of cherries we can use and think about other types of varieties, maybe other types of fruit in the future, who knows? It's all possibilities, it's all in our own hands, it's, it's our brewery, we can do whatever we want. And that's, that's great.